Were you a scumbag in the early 2000s, like me, who didn't have money to buy uh, CDs or movies or games or programs and software um, the right way and the legal way? Um, well, today I'm going to talk about the Pirate Bay and what happened to the founders. I'm sure you've heard of the Pirate Bay back in the early 2000s and how you can use it to literally download almost anything, almost anything, literally anything, literally anything. You'd be able to type something in and it would come up with a ton of stuff and then you would have to couple that with uTorrent. I'm sure a ton of people know what uTorrent is or at least used to know what uTorrent is. I don't think too many people torrent things anymore nowadays just because simply of how dangerous it is to do. Um, but yeah, this is the Pirate uh, Bay uh, website and what it used to look like. Um, as usual, uh, this video is brought to you, this reaction is brought to you by Marshall Lee, and the source video is brought to you by Logically Answered. Again, the title is, Here's What Happened to the Pirate Bay Founders. You'll be able to find that on their uh, page, so go check them out. We're going to react to it. Uh, it's muted. Most infamous websites in the world. Ever since it launched, in All right, let's the Pirate Bay is likely one of the most infamous websites in the world. Ever since it launched in 2003, the Pirate Bay has been one of the top places to pirate movies, software, and games. Early 2000s, bro, I told you. Bro, movies, software, games, bro. I used to, I literally downloaded, I, th I think I downloaded um, Norton and some other antivirus stuff off of the Pirate Bay just because I didn't feel like paying for it, which is kind of counterproductive because you're buying antivirus and anti-malware software. Um, or you're downloading that anti-malware and antivirus software illegally. So how do you know that you could... It's, it's so counterproductive. I don't even know why I did that. Oh, my God. As you would guess, this has enraged copyright holders and prosecutors who have been trying to shut down the site and punish pirates. Of course. But despite how many times they take it down, it seems like it's always just a matter of time until the site is back up and running. Considering this, yeah, you would think that. that the key to solving the issue is addressing the root problem by taking down the founders. But prosecutors have tried this as well. They chased the founders across the world, threw them in jail, and charged them with every copyright infringement charge you can think of. Alright, first of all, who knew you could go to jail for copyright infringement? Who knew? Who knew? So, basically... If I'm doing the same thing with these guys, like uh, whenever I get, you know, copyright infringement strikes on my um, videos on YouTube, uh, it's uh, it's not even like a strike. It's just like, you know, these this is copyrighted material, blah, 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 blah. They don't even really ask me to take it down. They either block it or something else. But who knew you can go to jail for this? Yet the pirate bay still lives on. In fact, one of the founders is actually happy to do jail time in order to keep the Pirate Bay alive. So, here's how the Pirate Bay came to life, what happened to the founders, and why prosecutors have struggled to take it down. <laughs> Taking a look back, the origins of the Pirate Bay date back to a Swedish organization called Pirat Biron, which means the Piracy Bureau. As the name suggests, the organization focused on legalizing piracy through political connections, also didn't petitioning, know it was and based lobbying. In Sweden. Most people at the organization felt that information should be allowed to freely spread across the internet, and they questioned the idea of intellectual property. In fact, some of these guys would even argue that piracy is helpful to companies, because it gets expensive software and games into the hands of people who would have otherwise never tried it. Exactly. And once they get addicted to the said game or software, they're much more likely to actually buy it the second or third time around. I mean, that is a bit controversial. I mean, I kind of, this is like, kind of bittersweet with that i mean like you know some poor kid who can't really afford this best of the best software or whatever album like me uh back then at least and still now um i would definitely download like anything i could just to avoid paying for it but i would use it especially fl studios you know how many people downloaded fl studios 
illegally, like the cracked version. You remember that? Like cracked versions. And you had to get key gens. And it was, <laughs> it was, the early 2000s was a wild place for the internet. A wild place for the internet. But yeah, I mean, if you had it, like through Pirate Band, you downloaded it illegally, cracked it successfully, nothing was wrong with your computer. There's no reason why you would buy it the second time around, right? Unless it's coming out with like uh, Spider Man 2 and you got Spider Man 1, you liked it so much, you're going to get Spider Man 2. I can see that. Now, I would never argue that piracy is moral, but there's no doubt that software like Windows, Adobe's Creative Cloud, and even Grand Theft Auto wouldn't be nearly as popular as they are today without piracy. This, is this true. line of reasoning was basically the framework of Pirate Biron, and in September of 2003, they would decide to take it to the next level. Three Pirate Biron employees named Peter Sund, Gottfried Swartham, and Frederick Nage launched a file sharing website called the Pirate Bay. The idea was inspired by BitTorrent, which made its debut a few years before this. Originally, the Pirate Bay was run out of servers in Mexico. Gottfried convinced his employer who had service in Mexico to help them run the site, but it didn't take long for his employer to back off. So, the founders were forced to bring the site back home, and Gottfried ran it using his Pentium 3 laptop which only had 256 megabytes of RAM. Despite the basic setup, given the limited number of file sharing sites back in 2003, it didn't take long for pirates to flood in. Hey. By the end of 2004, exactly. the pirate base saw a total of 1 million users and 60,000 files being shared. As the site grew, the trio expanded their operations by getting servers and databases, and they transformed their laptop service into an international hub for file sharing. So think about that. There were over a million users with 60, with a total of 60,000 files being shared. Now, <clears throat> I'm no mathematician, right? In fact, I'm probably the furthest thing from a mathematician. But <clears throat> that means that back in 2003, people were probably mostly um, pirating albums, like music, mostly music probably some like you know software in between here and there like fl studios or ableton stuff like that but i feel like a lot of it was was just straight music and media and by 2006 everything under the sun was being shared on the site and i feel like a lot of the since there was just a million oh just slightly over a million people using it and only 60,000 files being pirated um, I feel like a bunch of those users were the piraters or were, uh, yeah, I guess the pirate pirateers, um, not the actual pirates themselves putting the files out there. There was probably just a limited number of them, but tons of people just downloading the same stuff. Whether that be music and movies or software and games. And to make things worse, the Pirate Bay wasn't even trying to distance themselves from these activities. Some other popular piracy sites like Mega.nz try to put up a good guy persona in order to minimize trouble with the law. Ah, so uh, Mega.nz try to put up a good guy persona. I remember, I remember using this too. I remember using this too. In fact, I thought it was named something else. Persona but in order to I minimize trouble this, with uh, the law. That logo. But this wasn't the case with the pirate <coughs> base. These guys were proud to enable free information sharing across the internet, As and they, they should. had no intention of hiding behind some fake persona. Nope. And this attitude became extremely apparent to authorities after they sent out dozens of copyright infringement and cease and desist notices, which resulted in no action from the founders. The police tried to just ignore the site for many years, but as the site continued to grow in popularity, they started to receive more and more pressure to take it down. And in as, 2006, yeah. they finally decided to crack down. Three years after. All right, we got an ad. On my heritage, you can build your family tree and make amazing discoveries about your family history really yeah, easily. I, I already know where my family came from, buddy. I'm sure the founders always expected trouble with the authorities given the nature of what they were doing, but I'm not sure if they expected the force at which prosecutors would hit back. On May 31st, 2006, 65 police officers raided the Pirate Base Data Center Ooh. and shut down their servers. None of the founders were arrested, but it was made pretty clear that the site should not be restarted. As you would have guessed, though, the founders ignored these demands. Hey. They went ahead and got new servers in an unspecified location in the Netherlands, and the Pirate Bay was back up and running within just three days. That's Pete. Not only did the raid not take down the website, but it actually led to more people using the website. You see, ah. the police raid became international news, and even the New York Times ran a story about it. 
Aside from this. driving more users to the website, these news articles fueled an international movement amongst internet nerds. Exactly. One hacker went it's like literally... Hold on, let me hear head and like. hacked into Sweden's national police website, police.se, and it took down the website. And <laughs> just as the police website was restored, the government website was taken down. See? You can't do this to, I wouldn't even call them nerds. You can't do this to super smart people on the internet. They will find a way to be anonymous and screw you. They don't care if it's the government or the police. They don't care. Especially if you're taking away something that was benefiting them, right? Clearly, these were extremely irresponsible moves. But they definitely made a statement. Yeah, they Shortly did. Shortly after the raid, the Pirate Bay grew to be the 465th most visited website in the world, and some lawyers even jumped onto the founder's side. The lawyers accused the police of unfairly impounding every server in sight during the raid. You see, the servers that were impounded weren't only responsible for running the Pirate Bay, but also responsible for running dozens of small websites and businesses. Hmm. So the police had wronged all these businesses in the name of taking down one website. Bro, you got, okay, first of all, first of all, first of all, first Businesses. of all, let's so just take the, a look at this right here, right? You got three people with automatic rifles aimed right at you. You're on the computer. First of all, how do they get in without you noticing? Are you, like, deleting all your web history, all your internet history? I don't know, but uh, it seems like you're running some type of uh, coding software or you're running some scripts. The point that I'm trying to make is you see these people with automatic rifles pointed at you and the first thing you think of doing had all these is the running. Name down Look at the website. two guys. They the got their hands up. The this Swedish woman ran. They have a justifiable reason to conduct the raid in the first place. They accused the Swedish government of giving in to American political pressure instead of carrying out law and order. The government, of course, strongly denied chung, these chung. charges and these cases didn't really go anywhere. But the government had a nightmare dealing with all this unexpected negative PR. Initially, they expected that they would be hailed as the heroes fighting against piracy. Of course but instead, they would. They were being out to be the villains. Exactly. The thing is, most people have pirated media or software at some point during their lives. Um, <clears throat> I am not going to admit that at all. But I do know some people that were a part of, you know, the whole pirating culture. And, uh, you know, when you're taking away something from somebody, right, or a mass amount of people, and <clears throat> especially since, you know, artists that get, that made the content, right, the studios that made the content, they already are getting paid, like, millions of dollars. So people, like the people that I used to know, um, pirating stuff, they feel like they're not doing anything really too bad at all right they feel like you know these people are making their money already they've already made their money through box office sales through distribution sales and what harm am i doing by just downloading this one time and watching it right I, a lot of people wouldn't even really share it with other people a lot of people would just keep it on their computer for themselves you know some people would share it i feel like i know some people would share it but a lot of people, I feel like, just kept it. I mean, I get it. It is, like, <sighs> shit. Like, the, the media is being subject to bootlegging. And then once one person, you know, downloads that pirated content, um, they can then mass recreate it so that they can sell it. So I get it. But at the same time, like, you're literally cracking down on somebody's hustle just because they're, what's taking your your stuff that you already made like tons of money on i mean if i was in that position i feel like it's kind of helping me right let's say i was a major artist and i put out like one of my best albums it did really good um on with cd sales with streaming and everything but it is getting pirated and i know it's getting pirated and bootlegged right the thing is, yes, people are getting my content for free that I work super hard on, um, but I also feel like those people that are pirating it probably didn't have or didn't want to pay the money to get it, right, to experiment with listening to, right? So, like he said, 
like the 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 narrator said, maybe the first go around they don't want to pay for it, but the second time around, they're definitely they might they might be more inclined to pay for it. And not only that, you like gain fans by doing that. You gain more of a audience from pirating because now this paid for service is now free and it doesn't take away your name it's not like it's taking away your name your name is still on it so people know where this is coming from the original source is coming from so i don't know it's kind of two sides to the coin to this statistically 52 percent of online users have watched pirated videos even though 59 percent of users are aware that downloading and streaming pirated videos is illegal i mean we and all saw that would you download a car people who admitted to it as a result, when the news came out that the Pirate Bay had been taken down, it was not like the average person was jumping up and down in excitement. The more realistic reaction was probably, oh well, it was nice, it was while, nice it while it lasted. Yep. Considering this, only a very small portion of people went out of their way to support the Swedish government's actions. And without large public support, the government couldn't just raid the Pirate Bay again because that would just increase its popularity even more. Smart. So they decided to address the root by taking down the founders. If you want to eat healthy Another, and feel uh, your best, you got to try Kachava. Kachava is the world's healthiest all-in-one meal mouth. shake. It's Kachava. On April 17, 2009, the three founders, Peter, Frederick, and Gottfried, as well as the server provider, Carl Lundstrom, were found guilty of assistance to copyright infringement and were each sentenced to one year in prison. They were also ordered to pay a fine worth 30 million Swedish kroner or $4.3 million. This so, bruh, a fine worth, first of all, who, kn oh, okay, I was about to say, 30 million, at first I thought that was f uh, three, I don't know, but yeah, wow, that's, that's wild. They were also ordered to pay a fine worth 30 million Swedish kroner or 4.3 million dollars. The squad appealed the verdict, arguing that Sweden gave into political pressure. This actually decreased each of their sentences by a few months, but it increased the fine to 46 million kroner or 6.6 .6 million dollars. This didn't really matter to the founders though, as they had no intention of paying the fine. That's Peter key. actually held up a sign during the press conference that followed the verdict that said, I owe you 31 million kroner. He followed up this statement by suggesting that this was all the government was going to get. He claimed that he didn't <laughs> have any money, and even if he did, he'd rather burn everything and not even give them the ashes. In terms of the arrest though, Carl That's and Peter so didn't key. really resist much further and they simply gave in. But the same could not be said about Gottfried and Frederick who went on the run. In terms of the arrest though, Carl and Peter didn't really resist much further and they simply gave in. Okay. But the same could not be said about Gottfried and Frederick who went on the run. Gottfried ran away to Cambodia which had a no extradition policy to Sweden. Nice. But despite the policy, the Cambodian police arrested Gottfried on August 30th, 2012 and deported him back to Sweden. There's been some speculation that Sweden and Cambodia had an insider deal to extradite Gottfried. Just six days after Gottfried was arrested, the Swedish government announced a 400 million kroner grant for Cambodia. So it is awfully suspicious, but all we can do is speculate. That's weird. That's suspicious. 400 million uh, kroner grant for Cambodia just six days after they get Gottfried? That's weird. Once Gottfried was back in Sweden, he served his jail sentence at the Mary Fred prison. But the police didn't just stop right there. They also piled on hacking and fraud charges, which led to a total three-year sentence. But eventually, in September of 2015, Gottfried was released. I mean, and finally, as for Frederick, he was able to evade the police for even longer than Gottfried. He had fled to Laos slash Thailand, and he had built a life in both of these countries. Honestly, I don't know why he didn't just choose one or the other, as this dual life resulted in him crossing the border on a regular basis. And mm. during one of these border crossings in November of 2014, he was arrested and deported. Fortunately Dang. for Frederick, his prison sentence was far less severe than Gottfried's coming in at 10 months. Frederick actually claims that prison wasn't even that bad and that it was well worth it for the Pirate Bay. Apparently, he was I mean, the only one in the prison that was there for a virtual- You're literally going to prison in Sweden. I really don't think it's that bad. Plus, I've seen uh, some of these shows that um, involve the prisons in Sweden, so can't be that bad.
to a crime. So it's it's it literally looks like a, like a like a blue collar type of prison. Like nothing too crazy. It's <laughs> it's like they get to leave their cells, make coffee, make food all themselves, leave the prison itself, go work and come back. But the guards weren't as tough on him. He says that he was able to smuggle in USB sticks with movies on them and watch them on his prison TV. He did miss his friends and family, but he received dozens of letters from fans of the Pirate Bay, which he says helped him get through the 10 months. Anyway, now that all the founders were behind bars, the police could finally shut down the Pirate Bay once and for all. Or so they thought. You thought. On December 9, 2014, the Swedish police raided the Pirate Bay once again and impounded all of their servers, computers, and equipment. With the founders out of the game, this must be the end, right? Wrong! Well, just four days after the Pirate Bay was taken down, a torrent site called Isohunt launched a website called oldpiratebay.org which mirrored all the content on the Pirate Bay. And this is when the prosecutors that. realized that they had lost the game forever. Literally. Here's the thing, the Pirate Bay doesn't actually host any files themselves. They just connect peers from around the world using links. So all the Pirate Bay is storing is links. The contents of the entire website can be stored within a gigabyte, if not less, and there are thousands of people making copies of the website on a daily basis. So even if authorities take down one copy of the site, it's not very difficult to upload a gigabyte of data to a new server and get a new domain. And that's why it's impossible to truly take down the Pirate Bay. Considering this, prosecutors have basically given up on taking down the Pirate Bay as there's simply no single person to hold accountable. In the meantime, copyright holders have shifted their efforts to working with internet service providers to cut internet to pirates. But this has just left the pirates using VPNs. Anyway, as for the founders today, Peter went ahead and founded a Patreon-type service called Flatter. Instead of donating to creators though, the service is used to donate to websites and projects that better society and reveal corruption like WikiLeaks. Aside from Flatter, Peter has also given several speeches and interviews regarding his various views on the world. Gottfried and Frederick, on the other hand, don't have nearly as big of a public image. In fact, they have no public presence at all, and they simply disappeared into the depths of the internet. After Frederick was released, he said that he was going to get an IT job and settle in Laos, so that's presumably what he's doing now. And that's what happened to the Pirate Bay's founder and why the Pirate Bay can never be taken down. Do you guys think piracy is moral? Comment that down below. Also, I mean, I don't think piracy is moral. Drop a like if you've ever downloaded something that you shouldn't have. And of course, consider checking out- You're not gonna catch me. Um, alright, so. Wow. A lot of information on that. I have a lot of really good information. Thank you, Logically Answered. And I will see you next time.